much. We didn't have much money, but still. And ran this school in the country as well as the one in London. We amalgamated as much as possible. We often took a child to board if the mother was having a baby and was away in the hospital. And they had the same apparatus there as they were used to in London. And it worked very well. I also later, this was very exciting, purchased a house in Scotland on a moor, a very bleak moor, close to a tiny remote village called Clocken, far up in Scotland in the Murray Firth. The children went there for several weeks and learnt about country life, leaving television behind. They experienced the leisured atmosphere of a village shop. It's just unbelievably different from London, where conversation is so much relished. They made their own leisure activities in the evenings and loved to help the local farmer with his sheep. We took our disabled children within their school families and we learned to integrate them for 24 hours instead of just within school hours. We learned the different needs of someone blind without knowing light or dark or blind with minimal light or dark. Um, sight. Jill came to us and she was blind from birth. It was very different from Alistair. Alistair had seen a tree. You just try to describe to a child who's been blind and never seen a tree what a tree is like. You can give a feel of a leaf, you can hold a bark, but you can't. It's very difficult to give the treeness of a tree. I learned so much. Our genius level, and we often had genius level children brought specially to live in the area because they could go at their own rate. And our ordinary, so-called, and our disabled all thrived at their own place, pace with the categories of activities outlined by Montessori. With such success that in 1975, I think it was 75, may have been 76, I can't remember, the BBC made a 40-minute documentary of the school with an introduction by Princess Margaret's husband, Lord Snowden. We did wonderful self-produced plays in the grounds in Great Missenden, combining both the schools together. Our adolescents saw not only the stars in London, but the night skies in the country when they visited the desolate moorland. How then did we manage to incorporate Montessori's ideas of learning practical economics? This was great fun. The adolescents ran a shop and goods could only be bought with our specially made school currency. So you couldn't just have the money. By having our own currency, parents couldn't augment it. This currency had to be earned. It could be earned by doing chores around the school or the garden. A committee of students priced these jobs. The students kept proper bookkeeping. Easy jobs were paid less than the unpleasanter or harder tasks. Some students made lemonade, others cooked cakes, painted pictures, made models for the shop for sale. Any handicraft done by the children and made for the shop was also put on sale. In this way, they learnt about supply and demand and general economics in society in a sheltered way advocated by Montessori. I found that because they chose to get school currency by helping with the care of the environment, they were then very careful to see that their fellow students didn't make an unnecessary mess of what they cleaned. <laughs> Montessori said that children of this age should have the possibility for plenty of self-expression in occupations. She says in the Erkinder that they should study literature, have choral singing and play instruments. 
In listening to music, she said, they should be helped to learn to recognize the composition, the composer, and the period. I would add to this that they should also hear modern music of their own time. Nowadays, she would follow, I feel certain, all the wonderful brain research since the MRI scans. She would be so interested in the way that different types of music stimulate different brain areas. We now know which of the brain parts are anti activated by different types of music. Now, I'm going to tell you these. I'm giving you a copy of this so that you have it. Rhythm. Music with strongly marked rhythm activates the Broca's area of the brain within the cerebellum. I found that tapping or clapping with the rhythm or use of the triangles or drums were very much enjoyed. Sometimes the noise of the activity of banging the table with the flat of the hand to the beat brought great enthusiasm. Movement activities always link other activities as well, if you do music as well as listening. Listening. Listening to music activates the auditory cortex in the right hemisphere of the brain. For music to listen to, just play the tape that will probably be enjoyed because it's familiar. Unfamiliar music, when listened to, activates the temporal and frontal lobes as well as the cerebellum. You, so you can help all these areas with these different types of music. Pitch. Pitch a note and get the children copy it. Get faster gradually with a little less time between the notes. Go from one single note to copy to two to imitate. Then if this is successful, try three or four. The precunious, P-R-E-C, precunious, sorry. P-R-E-C-U-N-E-U-S in the left hemisphere is now being active. With success, you can try whole syncopated phrases for them to copy, and some children can copy brilliantly. Melody. So you're stimulating different parts of the brain if you do all these different types. Melody. When a whole melody is known and followed, then the right temporal lobe is used. Find out melodies that were enjoyed in the past and choose these. When the music is very familiar, then the left side of the Broca's area becomes active. So you're stimulating the intellect the whole time. Words of music, remembering titles, play the game of what's the name of this tune or song because you're now stimulating another part of the brain. When a song title is trying to be recalled, it comes from the temporal lobe in the left hemisphere. So a good game to stimulate this area is to play well-known songs and let the students try to name them. Lyrics and understanding. When words are followed with real understanding of their content, then the area that is activated is the Wernick language area. So we can see how important different types of music are for all our children. It's well known that cathedral choristers tend to do very well in their schoolwork. And we now know through these MRI scans why this is. So we can help our children in a new way. So that's... that's. For language, Montessori says students should be helped with their diction, acting, learn poems of their own choice. They should make speeches about their own interests and have debates and discussions presenting their ideas. Montessori children who come through make very good barristers because <laughs> they're used to speaking to get a thick point over. My two schools amalgamated and played Miss Summer Night's Dream in the country school's garden. When left to do it, they all knew so much by heart from all the different parts of the play. This happened naturally without sitting down to learn it. It came through constantly hearing and reading the play together and acting. 
This is a way that children naturally learn through the whole. We tend to say, learn the first verse. They learn much better if you let them repeat the whole. I've done enormous amounts of play.